Hello everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to day five of the 10 days of business strategy Facebook live session with yours truly Zara Marks aka your queen of things. Um, so yeah, today we are going to talk about creating your minimal viable product. So before I get started, uh, we started this at the beginning of the year, so January 1st, literally, with uh, business goals. So we talked about business goals and product goals and how to achieve those, how to create those, um, the timing that it would take for and really what you should focus on, as well as talked about business goal killers and how that can affect your business and how you move forward. And then the next day, we talked about tools, uh, little fun topics around, you know, th some things that can make you more productive as a business owner and an entrepreneur. And then day three, we talked about one of my favorite topics, personas. So again, um, when you're talking about your business goals and talking about creating your products and your goals, you always have to keep in mind your persona. And your persona and your customer and the person you're going after and you are seeking for feedback and looking to provide value to, right? So that's your persona. That was day four, right? Um, no, 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 that was day three. So day four was talking about once you've created that persona, because it's a fictional character and you really don't, you have someone in mind but you're not really sure, day four was talking about how to validate that persona. So how to validate that the things that you dreamt up in your mind about who your customer is, is really who they are. And so I challenged you to talk to three to five people to validate your persona and to make sure that that truly is who you're going after and who your customer base would be. So today, and this is kind of in order, right? Today we're talking about the minimal viable product. And the minimal viable product is that first thing, that first piece of whatever it is, whether it's a website, whether it's the first product that you launch as a business, right? Um, whether it's um, a workbook, a book even, right? whether it's a workshop, whether it's a brick and mortar, um, which I don't recommend out of the, the gate, but we'll talk about that. Um, I, we're talking about your minimal viable product. The smallest thing that you could provide to your customer, get, get it in their hand and get the feedback, right? So an official definition of it is a minimal viable product is a version of a new product which allows a team to collect the maximum effort and a maximum of validated learning about customers with the minimal effort, right? So if you're thinking about building an app, it's what could you provide even before actually building the app? What can you do to validate that your customers indeed want this thing that you wanna provide? And that's really what your minimal viable product is about. But today I really wanna talk about how do you even get there? So on Monday when we created some of our business goals and our product goals, you know, one of the things, and I'll, I will actually come up with a different business model today to show you that this could really work um, and this process can work in all sorts of business models, right? You just don't have to be an IT person or a developer or a mobile app um, builder or developer that you could really take these type of strategies into any business. So today my uh, business is going to be a perfume designer owner person. So someone who wants to sell perfumes, right? Someone in the market, and again, this is totally fabricated. I came up with it just pretty much right now. And so we are going to develop a minimal viable product and it's going to be, I'm thinking about selling perfumes online. So I have a nifty board that actually, I hopefully you can see and you can give me feedback on whether or not you can see. So we're going to develop a minimal viable product for this perfume and there's four things that I really want, you know, to think about when I think about my customers. And there's a big question I wanna ask is, what problem are you trying to solve for your customer? And the problem, we're gonna make up one today. 
The problem we're trying to solve for customers is that customers can't get a customized perfume that would fit their body and their fragrance, right? So that's the problem we're trying to solve. Customers want to customize their perfume, period. So great. How do we start to think about a minimal viable product for that? And so some things that I really, really challenge even my customers and my business um, to think about is before you even actually get down to, you know, your base perfume and the fragrances and all the fun stuff, right? And the beginning part is fun too. What could you do that doesn't require you purchasing anything? That's even possibly more than just a conversation, right? Can you bring something that you maybe created just in your home, you've put a couple of smells together and you know, could you bring that to a customer and say, hey, how do you like this? Give me some feedback about what you think. Or can you talk to someone, sit down with those three to five personas and say, you know, I know you're really interested in smelling good. <laughs> um, what do you think about customizing your own perfume? And then you can get some feedback about whether or not people are interested or not, you know, and that's really, honestly, that's an MVP. If you can go to one of these trade shows, put up a booth, maybe you'll spend a little money and say, what if I could customize a perfume just for you? And maybe give them a survey or just sit down and talk to people. And you come to find out, you know, and you make sure you write things down because I'm all about metrics and I'm all about measuring things because we really want to learn. Before you even build it, you talk to 100 people and 75 of them said, absolutely. I want to know more about what you're doing. I'm excited. This sounds like something I'd be interested in. Take my information. That's huge. You have no idea because they become and they come on their journey with you and they become some of your first beta customers. I think you've probably heard of that, your beta customers. And they once they take the journey and see how long how far you've come and maybe you offer them some free products, you get some additional feedback from them, especially as you build your business, they become lifelong customers for you. How do you think uh, folks like Airbnb started? So quick story about Airbnb. I heard them on a podcast uh, not too long ago. I'm a huge podcast listener. And one of the things that they talked about was when they first got started, first of all, the two guys, I don't even know their names, but I, 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 whatever, it doesn't matter, right? So the two guys that started Airbnb, they were broke. And what happened was they were late on their rent and they lived in San Francisco. And there was a conference that was coming up and they were like, okay, if we can get a couple of people to pay for, you know, some space on our floor for this conference, you know, we could pay for our rent. And they did. They took a couple of pictures of their apartment. They put it on a janky website. You should see. I think there's a website up there that shows you like what old sites look like. They put it up. They got three people to rent from them. And like that was the start of Airbnb. That was their minimal viable product. They didn't have to spend a ton of money getting something out there. I am definitely sure they didn't have these great DSLR, you know, cameras. I don't even know if I said that right. These great cameras, but Airbnb started their minimal viable product with three people sleeping on air mattresses on their floor in San Francisco in a small apartment. Airbnb is a billion dollar company today, but they use the same process, the minimal viable product to get to where they are today. Same thing with Zappos. And actually my uh, my example today in customizing our perfume is much like what Zappos did. So if you know anything about online retail, Zappos is a big online shoe retailer. And you can customize your shoes or get, you know, shoes there, right? But they started off with a nasty website. Oh my gosh, you should see what it looks like. Zappos website back in the day was horrific. But that was their minimal viable product. They wanted to get something out there to see if the concept alone would work. At that time, 10, 12 years ago, people weren't purchasing 
if anything, they definitely weren't purchasing shoes online. They, they may, we may have been purchasing other things, but people were not purchasing shoes. So Zappos was really, really um, a novel idea 10, 12 years ago when they started. So um, when you're talking about a lot of these businesses and, and the new startups and uh, new businesses like Facebook and Twitter, Twitter started the same way. They, you should have seen Twitter's logo when they started. Boy, it was ugly. Uh, but they started with this concept of the minimal viable product. A minimal viable product is what's the smallest thing that you can build where you can get it in front of a customer and learn. And then after you learn some things, you can integrate that feedback back into your product, make it better, and do the same cycle again. So we call it, and I'm, I'm writing something down for you because I want you to get this visual. We want to build measure so you'll see learn and then we'll build again so doot doot I'm writing I'm writing and you'll see my see build measure learn that's the thing that's when you talk about the minimal viable product, this is the cycle that you want to be able to build into your business regardless of what you're trying to do. So if you are a cake owner or a cake catering company, you know, maybe you start off not with a website, but maybe you start off with having people call you and give you orders over the phone and text, hint, hint, for some of the people that are online right now. Or, you know, maybe your next step after that, you've, again, you've built it, right? They are just calling you, they're texting you, you've tested out the fact that people want customized cakes, and then now you measure it, okay, is this, you know, <laughs> is this the best thing that I can provide to them, or is there some way I can automate them to make their process and their lives a little better as I'm building my business? So that's measuring, right? How many customers are satisfied? Do they want more? What are they asking for? What did they, you know, what would help my business? Maybe it's not all about your customer, but maybe it's all about, you know, what would help you streamline your business. You learn from it, and then guess what? You incorporate something new back into your business, and it's a cycle that you can repeat over and over again. It'll just make your product and the things that you're trying to do better. It'll help you grow and it'll help you scale your business. And that's really what we want to, business is about making money and it's not all about making money and it's about making an impact and, and, and creating value for people. And so part of what we do is we need to learn and, and make it valuable for our customers. And that's actually the best thing. It's just when you hear customers say, Man, my cake was so beautiful, which I tell you all the time. You're so amazing, Ebony. <laughs> and so you create the most amazing cakes. And so you can do things, you know, it's not just about that, but you know, if you're online and whatever you're doing in your business, if you have a tax accounting business, if you are a teacher, if you are working in corporate America, you know, it does not matter. Like, how are you providing value to whomever you work for and whomever, whether it's an actual customer or Awesome, I'm glad it looks good. If it's an actual customer or if it's somebody that you're physically, you know, providing a service or product to. So, back to my example, because I really wanna to get to a minimal viable product. Um, for something like if you are creating an online business that wants to customize perfumes, you know, you start, the first thing you wanna do is start writing down, again, the key question is, what problem are you trying to solve for your customer? So, if you can answer that, you can start jotting down features, right? What are some things that I would need as a customer that wants to customize perfume online? So some things that I might need would be um, an actual way to customize the perfume. And you might need, you know, there may be features as a part of that. Then um, customer customize, I'm writing things down you guys, so. Sorry if it looks a little distracting, but I promise you I'll show you the board. So you'll customize perfume, and then maybe somebody would want the ability to um, sample, sample the perfume. 
So we're talking about the minimal viable product and I'm gonna try it on the fly, create something and we're creating an online business that will let you customize perfumes, right? So you may wanna sample the perfume before you buy an eight ounce bottle, right? What if it smells nasty? So sample perfume and then at the end you want to pay for the perfume. Pay for perfume. So I wrote this down. So here it is, right? And in here, these dots or these dashes, it's kind of crazy, represent, you know, features that could go under here, right? So to be able to customize a perfume, you, you know, need to have options for them. So that could be one thing. So some feature would be an options feature. You would need um, the ability maybe for them to, you know, an account that they can keep up with their order. They may need a, a status of their order. I mean, there's a lot of things, right? So you just start jotting down ideas. And again, we're talking about the minimal viable product, things that you could do to get to a point where you can say, all right, so out of these things, right, what would be the most important thing that my customer would want in order to get to a minimal viable product, right? A minimal product that would provide them the most value. So maybe I take out the ability to sample their perfume. I mean, that might, based upon what you talk to them, maybe they just, they wanna know. They want to customize it and they wanna buy it. So maybe those are the things, again, that you say, okay, so maybe I should work on the customizing part. How do I help them easily customize something and get them into their hand, get it into their hands so that they can, you know, test this thing out for me. And maybe customizing means, again, going back to a trade show, this is the minimal, thinking about the minimal viable product. Having, you know, three different um, perfumes that they could customize and integrate with each other and create their own and then they walk away with that sample. So you've actually sufficed three things that you wanted to do in your minimal viable product without having to build a $10,000 website or a $3,000 website or whatever it is. You can you know, spend 50 bucks at a trade show and bring your samples there and look at, voila, they can customize. And then of course, as a part of that, again, you always wanna get feedback about whether or not you know this process was easy for them, how did they feel, was it um, helpful for them? So again, getting to your minimal viable product doesn't mean that you have to dish out a bunch of money, right? It means that you get to the most valuable thing that you believe and after talking to your customers, your customers believe would be of most value and it can, you can get there the fastest with the least effort, right? And that's really the key, the key is the least effort on your hand. So we talked about minimal viable products. I hope this was very helpful for you guys. I am so excited. This whole entire series has given me a lot of life. Um, has excited my um, my need and my want to provide more value to you guys when talking about business and um, how to get started in business, how to think about the first thing that you're going to be selling, whether it's a service or a physical product or an online product or whatever it is. I'm really excited to be able to provide um, all of this learning for you guys. So make sure you do me a favor and like this video, share it with your friends. Also, make sure you like my page at facebook.com forward slash queen of things. Also, if you like really cool emails, make sure you go online to queenofthings.com and subscribe to my email list. I promise you, I will not inundate you with crazy emails and emails that aren't of any value. I really do um, make sure that I am very thoughtful if, because I know we all get, I literally have 9,000 unread emails in my email box. So I don't like a lot of emails and I know you guys don't like them either, but I definitely want you to know this is the first week really focused on like the start of your business, how to get started. If you're just starting out as an entrepreneur or you want to get back you know, involved in your business and really start monetizing and organizing your business, then I'm right here. I'm going to provide so much more value next week. 
there's going to be a lot about back end. So the back end part of your business. I am so excited. I have two new guests. Well, one's returning, but two guests joining me. Um, one of them being an accountant. So we are gonna learn all about what's going on with this new tax code. Her name is Nicole Kirkland. She's really cool, really awesome lady. She's helping me with my personal business taxes and has already provided an awesome amount of value. So I'm really excited for her to join us on next Wednesday. So I'll be advertising that soon. And then I have back my favorite person, in the whole wide world, Miss Karen Swim, and she will be talking about Pitch Perfect. So we'll be talking about pitching, whether it's pitching yourself or your idea, your product, or somebody you work for, pitching your idea to media, and she is an absolute expert in this field, so I know this is gonna be really, really, really incredible. So tune in next week. I'll make sure I remind you guys about all the cool things that we're trying to do here at Queen of Things, and I have so much more in store for you guys. You have no idea. I am working my tail off tail off <laughs> in order to provide a lot of value for you. So I hope you guys are having fun. I hope I'm making this um, fun. I know sometimes business you know, can seem really daunting, but you guys can do it. I know you can kick butt in 2018. You are going to be rock stars. I can't wait to hear about all the testimonies about how much money you're making and how much value you're adding to people's lives and how much fun you're having in building and managing your business. So thank you guys for spending this time with me. Happy Friday and have an awesome weekend. Woo! Bye.